as we get started here in molecular ecology, first I want us to take a minute to think about what molecular ecology is and what it means. So if you've been going through this module on the introduction, introduction page, I gave a brief explanation of what molecular ecology is. But again, just take a minute to yourself. You can pause the video if you need to. Just think about what is molecular ecology? What is the definition of it? Or what does it mean to you? Um, you can think about the words contained within the term, if that helps you, molecular and ecology. So I'll give you a second to think about that. Okay, so really, molecular ecology, it's how the DNA or RNA of organisms interacts with their environment. So that's what I think is so cool about this field is that it's really merging these two different topics. So to explain molecular ecology a little bit better, I'll use an example here. Um, these are uh, Chlorosoma funebralis. This is the snail here that I work with in my research. This is a picture I took of them in La Jolla in Southern California. So we think about molecular ecology being this uh, how DNA interacts with their environment. So if we think about each of these snails contained within them, they have DNA and they have DNA. That DNA can also be transcribed, I ran out of space, into RNA. And remember, DNA is double-stranded. RNA is single-stranded. So we have this molecular flow of information from DNA to RNA. And even though you haven't taken molecular ecology before, if you think back to some of your other courses, maybe in um, Bio 184 in genetics, or if you've taken Bio 121, you have background information for this molecular side of things. So you already know some things about molecular ecology. And then for the ecology side here, so we have each of these snails has DNA and RNA molecules within them. And the molecular ecology side of things, we study how these molecules allow for instance, these snails to interact with their environment. So that's the ecology aspect. In particular, with these snails that I work with, we study how their DNA and RNA allows them to survive high temperatures. So this picture was taken during low tides. These are intertidal snails. This picture was taken during low tides, so they're exposed to midday sun. They can get really hot. Um, but these snails here in Southern California actually can survive these warm temperatures. And so what I've studied in my lab is how the molecules, either the different sequences of the DNA, or if they're expressing different levels of RNA of different genes, how those molecular changes allow them to survive in these stressful environments. Um, so... In terms of the ecology side, maybe if you've taken Bio 160 or um, all of you either right now are taking Bio 188 evolution or you have taken it already, a lot of the topics we cover, uh, like conservation for instance, are also covered in evolution. And really the reason why these snails in this picture from Southern California are able to survive these high temperatures is because of evolution. So the reason why I'm introducing this here at the beginning is for some of the assignments this week, I'm going to ask you to think about what you already know about molecular ecology. And even though we haven't completed the course yet, you haven't taken the course, this is just to point out uh, using one example that based on the previous courses you had, or maybe even things you've read or other experiences you've had, you do have some prior knowledge about molecular ecology that we'll be able to build on in this class.